Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. Hello, welcome to Illinois Stories. I'm Mark McDonald in Menden. About as far away as you can imagine from where you might start a seafood raising operation. But the latest business in Menden is in fact that Mike Finley, raising shrimp in the middle of Illinois, what in the heck, what got into you? <laughs> <laughs> well, actually the idea just came ran across it on the, on the internet is that uh, right? of all places. Uh, there was a farm in Indiana that was doing it and we drove out there and visited it. Uh, and then we went to one in Iowa and one in Minnesota and we decided that that looked like fun and something we wanted to try. Oh, be darn. Well, you know, and you can, I guess you can raise them wherever you want to as long as you've got the, the proper water and the proper technology, you've got a place, enough space for your tanks and all that. You could raise shrimp anywhere, I guess. That's right. It's, it's indoor. It's all climate controlled. So we'll be able to produce year round. Yeah, but here's the, here's the real catch, the catch though. People that can get shrimp here can get it absolutely as fresh as it can be, whereas if they wait for it from the coast, it's a couple of days old, isn't it? That's right. I mean, it's as fresh as you can get. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll, we'll dip it right out of the pool when the customer's here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, you had a, you kind of had a head start on this operation because as we look at the building behind you, we can see that what you've done is you, you've taken part of the old barn, and you can see part of it's still there, yes. right? And you, you lopped off the top of it and kept the foundation, and that's where you built your new operation. Right. The, the original barn was, was built in the 1890s. Um, over time, age took its part and yeah. toll on it. And uh, approximately 10 years ago, we tore the main part of the barn down and put a roof over the basement. And we was able to keep the lean-to. It was still structurally solid enough that we yeah. could still use it. So yeah, the the concrete wall here is, is 12 inches thick. That's the original foundation from the barn. Uh huh. And, and you didn't know when you did that, though, that you were going to have a shrimp operation in there. No, actually, we were, <laughs> we were joking as we were tearing it down, like, what the heck are we going to do with this yeah, building? What are we going to so, do with it? But the foundation is so good, we'll use it for something. We'll just wait and see. Huh? That's right. <laughs> okay. Well, and, and then your shrimp idea came along, and it worked out real well. Huh? Yeah, it's it's been a great facility for that. It's worked out well. You live on the property of the old family farm. Yes. And your, your, uh, your family's been here since what, early 1900s, I guess? Yeah, my family actually bought the property in 1908. Mm -hmm. um, the house is currently here, was built in the 1930s. Okay, and this is the one that, this is the one that you live in right over here, huh? Correct. Okay, and uh, now you tell me that that was the, the house that you replaced, your family replaced, the old house, was on the Underground Railroad Network. That's correct, yeah, the house was, was torn down when, the, when this current one was built, but mm -hmm. it was part of the Underground Railroad. Oh, be darn. Okay, now back back to this just a little bit. Um, when you when you actually made this into what it is, the shrimp shack, how did you did you develop the plans yourself? Um, majority of it we did we did plan ourselves. Um, we did uh, talk to three or four other people that are doing it around the Midwest and, mm -hmm. and get some ideas on on the mechanics of it. But as far as the the layout and and the way we designed. Most of the operation, we figured that out on our own. Mm -hmm. And your goal here is to raise, what, 400 pounds of shrimp every month? Yeah, we, we'll have, when we're up and running at full capacity, we'll be 400 okay. pounds a month. And then if you can sell 400 pounds a month, you're going to figure out a way to uh, to produce more than that, I'll bet. Well, we, we've got, <laughs> you got, we've got thought processes and already <laughs> rolling on that one. All right. Well, listen, we have a lot to learn during this program because I don't know anything about shrimp. I know what they look like and I know what they taste like, but I'll bet you most people are like me. They don't know what they what a what a shrimp larva is. They don't know what they what, you know how you how you bring them along. What stages of growth there are. So we're going to learn all that, and you're going to help us through. Okay. Okay. Let's go that way. Sounds great. Mike, before we go in and look at the operation, on our way around to the back side here, or this is the front side, I guess, we passed a propane tank. Yes. And and if you're going to grow shrimp quickly, the way you have to do it to make a business out of it, you got to have a warm environment. Correct. So not only your room has to be warm, but it helps if your room is warm because you got to keep the tanks warm, right? Yes. Okay, so we saw the propane. Propane's expensive. Yeah. So you'd rather do it this way, wouldn't you? Yeah, we uh, actually built a solar panel on the south side of the building. It's uh, six foot tall, 42 feet long. Mm -hmm. And we're estimating that it probably cut our heating bill in about half last winter. It, uh, it's been a lifesaver. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, we're got to keep, we'll keep the inside about 85 degrees. Uh -huh. um, Shrimp will survive at a cooler temperature, but we're trying to provide the ideal environment and get the best growth rate and mm -hmm. the healthiest animal that we can. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we try to maintain the water at 84 degrees, so we're keeping the room a little a little above that. So the weather we have like right now, it's a 60 degree day. 
the solar panels probably take care of it for you, don't they, if it doesn't get too cold? Yeah, our LP heater probably hasn't kicked on in, in uh, about 10 days. Yeah, that's terrific, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, this was a good idea. It's going to save you some money. Well, that's the plan. Yeah, that's the plan. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead. <laughs> well, Marty Douglas, you're a partner in this operation. Yeah. You and Mike yep. rebuilt the barn, refitted mm -hmm. the barn, mm -hmm. put in all these tanks, Right. And now you're going to give us an education on how you grow shrimp. Boy, they start right. out really little, don't they? We're yes, in the nursery right. section, right. huh? Right. Yeah, they start out eyelash size, and they stay in the nursery for about 30 days. Um, these here are approximately, these are actually older than 30 days. We haven't moved them out onto the floor okay. yet. Okay, but they've grown right. considerably since you got them. Right. So these are... And these, these yeah, these are eight eight weeks old. We, we should explain that, that this is very steamy in here and we're having to wipe the lens of our camera so that right. we can see. Okay, so these are how old? Eight weeks. Eight weeks. Look at them. Boy, they just really squirm and jump, don't they? Uh-huh. Can you catch one for us and hold it up? Is there any way to do that? These are eight weeks old. But they're, oh, I see. Okay, there's a good look at one. That's a pretty good, so they're a good catch. That's a pretty good size shrimp and, and that's eight weeks old. Right, okay. yep. All right, and all these tanks in here, these fish are all the same age. These are yes, all eight weeks, yes, okay. Yes, and when, yes. And when you get one, they're almost invisible. They're so little, you get 15,000 of them in a bucket. Yes. Wow. Yes, eyelash size, very small. Eyelash size, okay. Um, yep, and currently we have about 5,000 on each side. Okay, and then when they get to a certain age, and it won't be too long, is it? These, these will be moved into these larger tanks. That's correct. Let's right. go this way. Okay, these are young ones. Right. These are older. These are young right. ones here. Right. And this would be our second harvest right here. These were in November. So this is our middle size. Oh, you, size. Got, you got them in November. This right. is middle size? Yeah. Oh, yeah, they're coming along. Starting to look like a, a, real, a real shrimp. Right. Yeah, right. look at that. Okay. Do they get much bigger than that when you're, when you're ready to harvest them? Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah, they'll be the size of my hand when they're ready to harvest. Is that right? right? Okay. And that'll be, what, another couple of months or so? Right. It'll be two more months. Uh-huh. So you got to keep them for six, seven months before they uh -huh. get mature enough to sell, huh? Right now we're at between five and six five months and six? before they're ready to sell. Okay. Now, I, we're going to talk about all the balancing that you have to do for the water in this operation. But the fact is, you don't have to add a lot of water. This water sort of gets used over and over again. That's huh? right. The, um, the only water replacement we do is evaporation. We replace the yeah. water for evaporation to keep our pools at the, hot, the right height. Now we see a lot of a, a, a lot of bubbles and a lot of pumps going on. What, what's right. what's that about? Uh, that that's actually a good bacteria a good bacteria reaction, and uh, when uh, the the algae reacts, it creates gases, and the, the gases are what's creating the bubbles mm -hmm. on the top of the and, and, swimming pool. And this, you got to keep it oxygenated, right? So that's, that's, right. that's the aeration right. process that's going right. on? Right. And then the aeration part of it is, these are just stones, uh, air stones, by a large pump, and they pump the air into the water, uh -huh. and that's what gives the dissolved oxygen to the shrimp. Oh, okay. All right. Now you also notice as you look around, there's lots of there's lots of lines coming in, and, and you'll right. see you see the water coming in. What what's what's happening there? Okay, um, on this pool here where we have the air drops, it uh, keep, keeps the water in motion, and the most the water makes the circular motion, uh -huh. and it keeps the solids rotating in the pool instead of setting, settling to the bottom because shrimp are bottom dwellers. Yeah. So you want to have the rotation to keep the solids spinning. Okay, and then and then what happens to the solids like when you get too many of them? What 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 happens at um, that point? And we're then, talking about obviously when you've got thousands of shrimp in there, they're right. all eliminating, you know, and and they don't eat all the food. So so there's there's sort right. of a well there's uh, two advantages there. One is the uh, bacteria continues to clean up and uh, clean the water, mm -hmm. and then uh, when our solids get too high, it goes through a filter system, which is back here. And uh, 
we, we filter the water in and then filter it back into the pool and the filter picks up the solids uh, oh. when, when they get too hot. Okay, so it does, it does send the water into the waste uh, barrel there, but right. then it's funnels it, it filters it and funnels it back right. into the pool. That's right. Okay. Right, but as you can see, it's not running because we manage the levels. Okay. And, and how many how many shrimp will you have at a given time in here? Um, right now we are pushing over eighty thousand. Wow! But we are looking at a big harvest in July. That's where we want to we want to hit the summer the prime months. Yeah. For July. Yeah. And, and then you continue to replace them with like you say these little eyelash uh, sized larvae. How right. Do they call them right. Larvae? Right. And, right. and when, when do you get another delivery of those? Is it, are, do you have one already ordered? Um, no, we haven't ordered another yeah. one. It'll depend on how uh, the supply goes yeah. with what we already have. Yeah. When, when, you, when you know that you're going to need them, can they get them to you in a couple of weeks? Or how long does it take um, to, to get them? It, 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 it's only a, you get them twice a month. You can only get them twice a month. So yeah. we'll, it'll be a, a scheduled, yeah. we'll plan it. It'll be planned. What an operation. And you did all this yourselves. We did it you all you built the whole thing yourselves. That's you, correct. You bought the pools and put them together. You put the aeration system together. You did it all yourself. Right, and the building. Right? It's yeah. remarkable. And the barn. It's right. remarkable. Mike raising all those shrimp in there. It looks like, oh gosh, let's buy some shrimp and just let them grow and sell them, right? But the water has to be right, doesn't it? Yeah, the water management's the key. Uh, we kind of joke that we should pay more attention to chemistry class in school because, <laughs> you know, we get using the vials and test You don't think you'd ever and, use it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I don't have to understand these, you know, these formulas. I'll never use them, right? Yeah, but it, it, there is a definite science to it. I mean, it's, it, like you say, it's not as easy just throw them in the pool and go. It, there's yeah. a lot of testing that goes into it and water management. Yeah, you're kind of fortunate because you live on the property and when you've got a few spare moments, once or twice a day, you can come down here and you can check, check the water levels. Yeah, there, some of the tests we do on a daily basis, some might only be a couple times a month, but mm -hmm. there's eight or nine parameters we test on a regular basis. Okay, well show us through a little bit of what you, what you do on a daily basis here. Um, these, these are IMOF cones. Mm -hmm. uh, we use these to test the suspended solids, which would be excess feed, the, the waste, um, and it'll tell us if we need to adjust our filtration system or what we need to do to manage the level of water. Uh, we have to have a certain amount of solids in there for the bacteria to grow on. Mm -hmm. So, you know, keeping that in certain certain range is, is crucial. You get too much. It, it there takes, has to be some, but if it's too much, then you lose, your, your fresh water diminishes, I guess. Right, and it, it'll take a lot of the oxygen out of the water if uh -huh. you get too much in. So, yeah, it's there, there's a certain range there that yeah. we try to maintain. And that's the stuff that, that gets pumped into your waste tanks and that you spread on the fields and stuff, right? That's, yes. that's what the suspended yeah, solids there, are. Yeah, there's not a whole lot that go, goes out the door, but yeah. there, there is some that we carry out out yeah. of the filtration system. Okay, all right. And then uh, you, you have to test, this is test what, what quality of the water? Uh, or, or what? This, these we use to test the nitrites. Okay. Um, we we add, a, add a powder to it and give it 10 minutes and depending on the on the the color that that turns, we'll go through and put it in here and has a, a color wheel. Mm -hmm. And you just spin the dial till you get your your colors to match up, which, mm -hmm. and then you can read the dial and it tells you what level you are. Okay, and, okay. and and then then you know whether you need to add more nitrite or whether you got too much in there. Is that is that well? That, that's that's actually one at zero where that's, that's part of the nitrification process of the ammonia getting broke down. So it, it's all, again, part of the water management. Yeah, yeah. The, the amount that's, that's fed, if, if nitrites get too high, we cut the feed rate back so mm -hmm. there's less waste produced. Um, and then we can do exchange, you know, to get, to get over the hump, we'll do mm -hmm. just a water exchange with the pool that's within specs to dilute the problem and until we can get it out under okay. control. Okay. And you got these meters too. These meters serve a purpose, I assume. Yeah, yeah. The this is a pH meter. Um, got, keep pretty close eye on the pH. That's one of the daily tests. Uh, we want to keep seven, seven point five, seven point six is ideal. You know, we got a, a bigger range we can deal with, but you you want to stay on top of it. You don't want to get too close to your extremes. Now, if, if your pH goes too low, is that when you add lime? 
Or yes. Wanted, yeah. Okay. We'll, so we'll too, okay, and that's what you got in this bucket over here, right? Yes. Yeah. It's just uh, we can dip out a little bit okay. here. It's just a you know a fine pattern lime. It'd be the same thing basically as mm -hmm. it put on the fields. Okay. All right. And that's if that brings your pH up. Yes. Okay. Gotcha. All right. And then this this is a big old guy. What's this? What's he do? Um, that meter tests several parameters: uh, dissolve oxygen, uh, salinity, which is the salt level in mm -hmm. the water, um, temperature. That's uh, one of our more expensive pieces of test equipment. But, yeah, because it does so many things. And then this is a, you've got a lot of these, and, and what is that? What that is that that's for? an air stone. It's a, it's a porous material and hooks onto our, to the air hoses and goes in the pool and it produces lots of small bubbles instead of just big bubbles that would come directly out of the hose to help helps oh, with see. the oxygen level in okay. the water. So it kind of scatters the oxygen. It doesn't just, one big bubble just explodes and it's gone, right? right. It kind of scatters yeah. it around. We've got two different sizes. We've got mm -hmm. to use those in the bigger pools and then our nursery tanks have the smaller mm -hmm. stones. Okay. So now you've got your water levels where you want them and somebody comes in to buy some shrimp and the first thing you do is, okay, how many pounds do you want? They tell you, you go into the pool where the big shrimp are, the, the most mature shrimp are, and you bring them out here and what do you wash them down for them here? Is that what you do? Well, yeah, actually we put them in, in ice water to kind of Slow, slow them down. Um, oh, the and first thing them. they get is from that 84 degree water, they get ice water, huh? Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, you know, that's, that's one of the most humane ways of, of handling the process. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, we'll leave them in the ice water for about two minutes and then we can package them up for the sale. Right. They're barely moving at that point then, right? Right. They're, they're kind of in shock. Right. Yeah. But they're still alive. Yeah. So they can't get any fresher, right? I mean, that's right. Still yeah. Alive. That's, that's our whole goal is a fresh product out the mm -hmm. door. Okay. And so that's when you go over here to, you've got your bagging and your weighing, that's where you weigh out what you need there? Yeah, we'll put, we'll put the shrimp in, in the smaller bag and then we'll slip that inside the bigger bag with ice. So okay, so ice goes in here, they yes. get it home, it's still cold. That's correct. Yeah, okay. Weigh it out and then I'll tell you, okay, what we haven't talked about is the fish, the feeding of these little shrimp and also the sea salt. The, I, you're a long way from sea salt. How do you how do you get where do you get sea salt anyway? The the, the instant ocean is the product we use. It's it's the exact same thing that they use in saltwater aquariums. I mean, it can be bought at the hobby stores. Mm -hmm. uh, we, and that's we, what this bag is here, right? Correct. It's really fine, isn't it? Yeah, it, it dissolves pretty well. It's barely coming out. Well, it's a little bitty hole, but it's barely coming out. But you can see it's very fine. Okay. And like how much of that, uh, one of those big tanks that we looked at, how, is it, does it take a whole bag of that? Uh, several bags. Several we, bags. We actually put over a ton of salt total in no the pools. No kidding. And, and how often do you have to add? Actually, we don't, we don't add, once we get it established, mm -hmm. we, don't, we don't have to add much. Really? Uh, through the evaporation, the salt stays behind and the water is what evaporates off. So. Okay, the salt stays in. Then, then you just keep adding water as it evaporates, and you don't have to completely change out the water very often, I guess. Correct. Yeah. The actually the the water matures. I mean, it, you get your bacteria, the proper bacteria. Mm -hmm. I mean, there there is good and bad bacteria, yeah. but uh, you get your bacteria established. So each batch that we grow, the water should progressively get better, and we can actually feed them a little harder, push mm -hmm. them a little harder, mm -hmm. and get the... So, so this is not an intensive, uh, like a freshwater intensive operation. You're not adding a lot of water all the time. It's just whatever evaporates you're adding, adding to. Correct. Yeah. And what do they eat? What do these shrimp eat? Well, the, this is, we've got five different stages. This is the final stage of feed. Mm -hmm. um, there's two companies in the U.S. making shrimp feed. Uh, it's, it's a very high percentage of fish meal and soybean meal, so mm -hmm. we're supporting the, uh, the green farmers in the area also. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the, and uh, they go through that, I mean, what does it how often do you have to add that to a tank of those fish? Uh, we're feeding twice a day, and that's roughly one, one feeding, so mm -hmm. they'll get that two times a day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, uh, actually, the first, first diet that they're on when we first get them is a, is a liquid. It just gets poured in the water. Okay, so they're not even they're not eating solid food yet. Yeah, we, we joke about bottle feeding them, but yeah. you know. It's a... <laughs> okay. And then, then what you do is you move over here and you've got your bagged up shrimp. 
Then you weigh it, and this is where the, where, you, where you sell. Huh? Yeah, yeah. This we got our certified scales, uh -huh. and, we, and our customers can yeah. go home and have the freshest shrimp available in the Midwest. Okay. Perfect. So there's your first customer. He looks like a happy man, huh? <laughs> he's been happy more than once. He's returned. He's been so. back. Well, that's good. When your first customer comes back, that's a good sign. Yeah. And in March of 12, March 12, 2015, that just shows how, how short a duration of time you've been in this business. It's brand new, isn't it? Right, yeah. yeah. We got our first batch in in October. So, yeah, mm -hmm. that was... And, and you're probably still selling some from that first batch. Or yeah. have you, they haven't moved all yeah, out. Yeah, out we still have some, some of the first yeah. batch left. Yeah. It, we mentioned earlier, we're in the old part of this barn now. And you, if you look at the, at, the, at the rafters above and the walls, you can see that you, you've been able to finish it kind of, but it still looks like the old barn in some places. Right, yeah. All, all the, the trim that we used is, is lumber that we've salvaged from the barn. Uh -huh. um, actually, there's still an old hayloft up above us. Um, this is a door that we've recycled. Mm -hmm. we, Try to keep as much of the history as we could. Yeah, it's pretty neat. Here's a here's a good look at the barn, right here, uh, before you tore it down. I bet it was kind of a hard decision to make, wasn't it, to tear it down? I mean, it was. It's a pretty old thing. Yeah, it really was. It just um, over the years the, the roof had aged and it mm -hmm. got to where structurally it just wasn't various, real solid. Various stages here, um, and this picture I like because earlier in the program you and I were standing in front of the solar panels, which were right here. Yes. Yep, that's where the solar panels were. And you can see how tall that barn was, how much you had to pull down. Yeah. Yeah, from the, from the peak to the concrete was a little over 60 feet. So it was a big wow. old barn. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. But it was going to fall down anyway, so you did the right thing and you made something good out of it, right? Right, yeah. We're still still able to use part of the structure and, and it's got the same footprint it did before, but mm -hmm. we're able to still still raise animals in it. <laughs> <laughs> Small sea, sea animals. That's funny. Okay, Marty, not, not everybody knows how to handle a shrimp. You took it right out of the water, right? This yes. shrimp is still alive. Right. So what, is, what does a person do when they buy a shrimp? Okay, well, when you, when you buy a shrimp with the head on, you, mm -hmm. you, you chill it, and that actually helps, uh, helps with deshelling it. Mm -hmm. And then you, you would grab it behind the rib cage right here on the shell right here and you twist and you try and get the mud vein to pull out you pull the mud vein out did it pull out for yep, you yep it sure did see okay there's... all right that's what they call by de-veining right huh? right that's okay. what you do vein it then you take your paring knife and this is the way i do it so okay. right up the back is right, that the right back right up the back right okay. mm -hmm. All the way down to the right. tail. And then you grab the shell mm -hmm. and peel the shell off. Mm -hmm. That one's a little stubborn, isn't it? Yeah, that one's stubborn. Okay. But sometimes they peel right off. Yeah. Sometimes At least stuck. the vein came yep, out for you. And then you, you just, just pull the back side of the tail mm -hmm. off. Give it a rinse. Mm -hmm. And there you Voila. You're ready to cook, right? There you have your filet mignon of the sea <laughs> shrimp. <laughs> Beautiful piece of meat. <laughs> okay, Marty, you, you deveined quite a few of these little devils for us. We sure appreciate it. You're going to steam it? Yes, I'm going to cookies and steam shrimp today uh, they should should be excellent they're excellent they're good and fresh aren't they good and fresh good you don't get them any fresher all right yep. show us how it's done all right uh, I already got the steamer warmed up got it lightly seasoned mm -hmm. uh, and then take and put them in the steamer and uh, about three minutes and they'll be done That thing's on an automatic heat, I guess. You don't have to set it. It just knows when wh what temperature right. to yep, steam them yep, at, huh? Yep, it's got an automatic heat mm -hmm. and an uh, automatic timer, so you can turn turn it and time it. Mm -hmm. About three minutes, you say? Three minutes. Can't wait. Yep. <laughs> well, Marty, is it time yet? It is time. Those, how do you how do you know? They're, they're done. Uh, it it turns into a, a white meat, just like a fish does. Mm -hmm. 
And when you when it's white all the way through, you know your shrimp are done. Okay. Well, can you so. take them out and show us how you how you serve them? I'm kind of I'm kind of anxious to to taste it. Oh, yeah. Frankly, they are good. Oh, those are beautiful. The little pink on top. That's kind of nice, isn't it? Yep. Oh, I have to dig them all out. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Yeah. And you can eat them just like that. The, okay. The, now, or you can have some of this, some of this sauce on it, right? Right. Or yeah, okay. if you want sauce, you can have okay, sauce. Okay, I think I'll. So you want to try the shrimp without the sauce? I'm going to try it without the sauce. Right. A, see if it's too hot to touch. No, it's perfect. It is, isn't it? It's perfect. You're right, the filet mignon yep. of fish. Yep. Mm. Wow. Yep. That's yep. delicious. We're going to be busy here for a few minutes. They're about ready to place their latest order sometime in May, and they're going to bring 30,000 more of these critters into central Illinois. With another Illinois story in Menden, I'm Mark McDonald. Thanks for watching. Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. For a DVD copy of the program you've just seen, send 1995 to Network Knowledge, P.O. Box 6248, Springfield, Illinois 62708. Be sure to include the program name, subject, and when the program aired. You can also order with your credit card by calling 800-232-3605.